All right, I'm back. I guess uh, 30 minutes is about my limit on memory. This was a card that said, cheer up. I'm glad you're out of the hospital, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was something more exciting, but nothing groundbreaking. Back to the shelf with you. I guess I can't reach on the shelf. What am I doing? The Outdoor Girls of Deep Dale. Geraldine Brown, Section 12, B5, Group A. Camping and tramping <laughs> for fun and hell. All right, then. 19, 12, 13. With a great crash, a deluge of rain. Let's see what the beginning scene sounds like. The Outdoor Girls of Deepdale, Chapter 1. A fluttering paper. Four girls were walking down an elm-shaded street. Four girls walking two by two, their arm, arms waist encircling their voices, mingling in rapid talk, punctuated with rippling laughter. And now and then, as their happy spirits fairly bubbled and overflowed, breaking into a few waltz steps to the melody of a dreamy song hummed by one of their number. The sun, shining through the trees, cast patches of golden light on the stone sidewalk. And as the girls passed from sunshine to shadow, they made a bright and sometimes a dimmer picture on the street whereon or other groups of maidens for school was out. Great reading in dusky light. I fucking love it. Did I already do this one? What is this? I do believe I did this one. Could be wrong. Yeah, I did it. This one, Little Dorrit by J Charles Dickens. Is that say? Helen G. Bates. This is from 1876, I believe. I don't know this book by Dickens, but then again, I've never read a book by Dickens. My God, that font is small. Anyways, this is going to go into my Dickens. Collection. Child's history, just child history of Jewish life. Dorothy F. Zeligs. Didn't know that there was a clamor for Jewish history or Jewish life by children, but I guess so. Nineteen forty eight for the first sixteen centuries of the common era. Palestine in the days of the rabbis from the very beginning. Have you ever wondered why you are you? Why aren't you a Chinese peasant boy eating rice with chopsticks? Or a woolly haired Negro, oh no, in an, in an African jungle. Or a Hindu lad in a crowded village of India. If you were any of these three, how different you would be and what different things you'd be doing. But you are you. And being a Jewish child, you are going to be bar mitzvah or confirmed at 813. And you have a seder at Passover every year. 
and you are in a Hanukkah play at Sabbath school. You celebrate many festivals like Sakath, Sukkoth, and Rosh Hashanah and Purim. If you belong to an Orthodox Jewish family, you don't eat certain kinds of foods and you observe the Sabbath in certain special ways. Kind of like that one uh, Republican representative who is now coming under fire because he said he was Jew-ish. Jew-ish. Apparently he's not Jewish. He claims he's gay, but he was previously married, but there's a lot of history in gay people having been married. I don't think Allen Ginsberg was married, but I know he had girlfriends, et cetera, et cetera. So that's not that big of a deal. Him lying basically isn't a big deal because all these motherfuckers lie. What else was there? Look at that, little shadows. Casting shadows on this guy. Anyway, I kind of have a Jew fetish myself. And I believe if I took a DNA test, I would have um, what's Jew, Jewish Jerusalem blood in me, but I'm not taking it because I don't want the Illuminati to have my uh, DNA. Not that they don't already have it. A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. I believe he wrote the... Pirate's Island. What the hell is it called? Treasure Island. Anyways, this book is literally falling apart, but there's a lot of cool illustrations in there, so I got it. It was obviously pretty cheap. I wouldn't have bought it. My bed is a boat. My bed is like a little boat. Nurse helps me in when I embark. She grinds me in my sailor's coat. Girds me and grinds me. Yeah. She bloody grinds me in my tailor's coat, my sailor's coat. She girds me in my sailor's coat and starts me in the dark. At night, I go on board and say good night to all my friends on shore. I shut my eyes and sail away and see and hear no more. And sometimes things to bed I take as prudent sailors have to do. Perhaps a slice of wedding cake. <gasps> oh! Perhaps a toy or two. All night across the dark we steer. But when the dark returns at last, safe in my room beside the pier, I find my vessel fast. I bet you do. Where shall we go? There or there? I think this would be more logistically smart. Harper's Modern Classics. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. 1950. Everyone knows Huxley. Brave New World, so we won't dwell on that as I'm covering the light. Oh, shitty, shitty book reviews. The Clue of the Dead Duck by Scott Young. The Secret Circle Mysteries, number six. 1962. Plotting trouble. I've often remembered that afternoon when the trouble all started. It was after school in the kitchen at Black Ab Maggie's. McGee's? Maggie's. What the fuck am I? Some old Henry uh, misfit? That's where I live. Though my name is Morgan Purdue. 
It's a wonderful big kitchen with a wood stove to keep it warm. An electric stove to cook on. There's a round table in the middle of the floor. And there are big old wicker chairs in the corners. Because this is where most of the visiting is done at Black Abs. Plum in the middle of the ceiling is a stove pipe hole. Where the pipe used to go before they had a furnace. Exciting stuff. Exciting. Can't read that. The Crisis of Capitalism in America by M.J. Bond. 1932. The Boom. Wait, let's see this one. Let's see how correct this guy is. The End of Permanent Prosperity, 122. I mean, they want to blame a lot of this stuff on capitalism, but in a free market, you obviously don't have a central bank which prints money on demand based on debt with no tangible backing and call it capitalism because you're trading, you're trading tangible goods for fucking debt that is made up on the credit of the United States, which is now $32 trillion in the hole. I mean, it's fucking obscene. It would be obscene if somebody would say, yeah, this is obscene, but the few people that do are laughed at. Under the end of Permanent Prosperity, Chapter 3, under these circumstances, it goes without saying that crises occurred in the United States from time to time, even before October 1929, the stock market crash he's talking about, and that many indu industries experienced more or less transitory marketing difficulties. Their repercussions, their repression, the repercussion is plainly perceptible in American credit policy. In 1927, for instance, the discount rate was kept low in view of the position of industry, though this was also done partly out of regard for the situation of the European banks of issue, which it was desired to protect against dear, dear credit. The fuck does dear credit mean? This continuance of low discount rates was possibly of service to industry, but above all, it allowed the rapid expansion of stock exchange speculation, which had been on the increase since 1921. And I agree that the stock market is an absolute racket meant to manipulate wealth and in whose hands it should be in. I mean, it's fucking criminal. But it doesn't matter. Anyways, this guy. This guy's great. The Search for Planet X by Tony Simon. At first, I thought this was like a doomsday or a conspiracy book, but no. 1962. This is Clyde. Tom Ball today. In 1930, as a young man, he made headlines. Ninth planet discovered on edge of solar system. He had discovered Pluto, the planet farthest from the sun. This is the story of his tireless search for Planet X, a story of challenge, suspense, and triumph. This is this old school elastic book. Inger Salia by oh, Memorial Edition. Gems of Thought by the late Colonel Robert Ingersoll. I'm not sure who he is. Great apostle of agnosticism. <laughs> that I didn't know. The late Robert Ingersoll. The message that came to the world out of the very... There it is, the trains are rattling my chimney flue. Creaking the boards of this old house. The message that came to the world out of the very heart of this golden summertide announcing the death of Colonel 
Ingersoll, R.G. Ingersoll, came to me, million, came to many millions in America and throughout the whole civilized world in the nature of a shock that resulted in sincere and universal regret. It was only known to those in the inner circle of his friends that the health of Colonel Ingersoll had caused any anxiety. Yeah, I give a shit about those death. Let's see what is. Oh, look at this. September 30th. Maybe there's more. I don't really want to know about it. The Romance of Farm Life. What the fuck's this got to do with the agnosticism? Is that what it said? Yeah, I don't know. I'll put that in my I don't really have atheist books, but I'll collect them if I find them. Ditto with religious books. The Dances of Bulgaria. Handbook of European National Dances. Throughout Bulgaria, on a variety of occasions, festive, religious, or social, the people will gather to join in their national horo, a gay dance with countless variations of music and step, in a circular chain formation for any number of dancers. The dancing of horos is enjoyed by everyone, from the soldiers in barracks to the workers in harvest fields, and in days gone by, many trades had their own version of the dance. Then there are the sheep's dance, Violet, Little Violet, and the rockin' Nitza with its accompany song, company and song. Here is this, let's say the 50s. 1951. Let's see if we can get the Horos. Oh, look, there's the Horos. Hell yeah, buddy. Look at them. Dance the Horos. In dim light. As you can see the jacket is in tatters. I kind of want to skip the Red Badge of Courage. Because Stephen Crane is blind to me. It's a modern classic. Stained to shit. Copyright 1925. Obviously a little value other than as a classic since it's got moisture exposure. But it's got a dust jacket too. And that gives it some value. Back to Vertical by H.L. Jackson. I only know because I was looking at it earlier. Jackson was a writer for the Detroit News, a columnist. And most of his stories are basically, there was a boy I saw down in downtown. And he doesn't really give out names, but once in a while he does. Anyway, this is from 1946. Oh, the covers look like the old... 19th century volumes, but they aren't. I'll give you an example. It hit home. Helen, being a young woman, hardly could help noticing the young lieutenant sitting with his mother in the pew of head of her in church. He not only was handsome, but his tunic carried the little ribbons and bars that told of three years overseas in three different theaters of war. When the service was over, he was casually helping his mother into her coat. His eye caught the big service flag hanging at the back of the church. His glance sharpened. In a voice of surprise, he said, Why, mother? Only eight fellows from our church have been killed. I don't know what the hell that means, but that's the kind of stories you got out of H.L. Jackson. Don Gall. See, once in a while, he'll add names. I don't know if people wanted to withhold names. Reactionary. Does that say? Scrim? Scrim got the chatting with an elderly citizen 
whose face had an aquiline nose, eagle nose, and a mouth as narrow as a miser's vision. And so frequently, as so frequently haps, when the old get to talking, the conversation swung to present state of the nation and the world. The seasoned citizen quirked the corners of his mouth as he observed, you may not believe it, but I have voted no for every proposed improvement for the last 59 years, 50 years. And the older I get, the surer I am that I've always been right. It's a little obtuse, but I'll just say Browning. I believe it's Browning. The poetry of Browning. Which one, Robert? Bubba Browning. Yeah, hey, Bubba. Bubba. No, he's not gonna tell me. <laughs> Which, which fucking Browning is it? Elizabeth Berry? No. It's Robert Browning. The Pied Piper of Hamelin. So I shall see her in three days. And just one night. The nights are short. Then two long hours and that is more. See how I come unchanged, unworn, feel where my life broke off from time, how fresh the splinters keep and fine, only a touch and we combine. Yeah, touch you all right. What is this bullshit? Green Mansions by W.H. Hudson. Whoa, spooky motherfucker. Who is this guy? Take a pen for this forward with the fear of one who knows that he cannot do justice to his subject. And the trembling of one who would not, for a good deal, set down words unpleasing to the eye of him who wrote Green Mansions, The Purple Land, and all those other books which have meant so much to me. 1926, 1916, 1944. <laughs> Old Gorgon Graham. I obviously got the book for that exact purpose because it's got a guy named Gorgon. More letters from a self made merchant to his son, George Horace Lorimer. I mean, who the fuck has a name Gorgon? 1904. Double day. Contents. Let's see, a letter to his son. Old Gorgon Graham's letter to his son. Carl's bed, oh, this is an actual letter. October 4th, 1890, I'm guessing. Dear Pierpont, I'm sorry you asked so many questions that you haven't a right to ask because you put yourself in the position of the inquisitive bull pup who started out to smell the third rail on the trolley right of way. You're going to be full of information in a minute. <laughs> In the first place, it looks as if business might be pretty good this fall, and I'm afraid you'll have your hands so full in your place as assistant manager of the land department that you won't have time to run my job to. Then I don't propose to break any quick promotion records with you just because you happen to be born into a job with the house. A fond father and a fool son hitch up into a bad team and a good business makes a poor family carry on. This book I'm going to skip. Operan, Operan Operetten Führer. I'm going to sound something like a Hitler. But I don't know. can't read German, so I don't know what any of this bullshit means. And the font is small, small. So we're just going to skip that. I don't even know why I got that book. Can't really resell it when I don't know what the hell it is. The Valiance of Virginia by Halle Ermine 
Ermini. Right. Reeves. Rives. Nine cents. No exchange. I'm already at 25 minutes. That means it's going to be over in four minutes. Or thereabouts. 1912 to the real John. Failed. Ejaculated. Second time a book said ejaculated in this evening. Hello, David. A study of school neighborhood. How does that mean? It's a kid's book, though. David at Country School in the City Neighborhood. Hurry, hurry. Exciting stuff. See if I can get one more quick one. Good one. Oh, I'm going to back in the fucking landscape. Something Elsie. Elsie Dinsmore by Martha Finley. Dodd and Mead. Oh my god, what's that font? 1908. What the hell does that say? 1878? Fucking focus, motherfucker. Nope, this light's too dim. I believe it says 1878. The school room. Why does so many of these start with school room? Don't give a shit about the school room. Silver poets of the 16th century. Sir Thomas Wyatt, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, Sir Philip Sidney, Sir Walter Walter Raleigh, 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 Raleigh. That's it. Sir John Davies. Every man's library poetry, number eighty nine eighty five. Just give me the fucking hair. 1947. It's not very old. I was hoping for one last good book here, but I don't think that's going to happen. What is this? Looks like it's upside down. Modern Library. Anatoly France. He wrote a good one called... Uh, the gods will have blood. This is 1919 Bonnie Live, right? It's like criticism. Let's see if uh, the gods will have blood is in here. I don't see it. The adventure of the South. The soul. The adventure of the South. I cannot read this shit. Just too small. Anatoly France, The Adventures of the Soul. As I understand criticism, it is like philosophy and history, a kind of novel for the use of discreet and curious minds. And every novel, rightly understood, is an autobiography. The good critic is he who relates the adventures of his soul among masterpieces. Is that so? One last book, I believe. Oh, don't fucking go to landscape, motherfucker. It's not gonna... Can you just... Quit acting like a peck snip. Upside down. Abundant Living by E. Stanley Jones. Right, small font. Looks like 1940, 35, 37. Cannot see that. 35. Since it's got a bookmark, and I haven't read a single page, I'll go to it. Anger is poison. No, it isn't. Anger is fucking great. Has this guy never seen Gordon Ramsay? In yesterday's study... We saw that the stomach is made for goodwill and not for ill will. Goodwill sets up the stomach and ill will. What's that say? I can't fucking read. 
it is in the margin. And we're back to... I can't see it. All right, I can't read in the, the dim. The dim light. One more book, maybe. William Congreve. Dude, quit going to... Landscape. I command you never go to landscape again. Masterpieces of English drama. William Congreve. Look at that pooped up wig. Hey, we're at 30 minutes here and it still hasn't shut off, but it shells in. Why must you do this to me, 1912? I'm not, this is way too small font to be reading in this dim light. Maybe I shouldn't pick up a book that's so small. The three-seated spaceship. The latest model of the spaceship under the apple tree. By Louis Slobodkin. I think this book's actually worth money, but it smells like absolute rot. Yeah, it smells like turpentine, asshole, with mothballs tossed in. 1962, The Strange Traveler. It was the hottest June on record when Eddie Blow's grandmother came down to New York to visit Eddie and his mother. Then when Eddie was done with school that year, she decided to take Eddie along and fly back to her farm up above Albany instead of going back, as she usually did, by train or bus. The Mort. Darthur. The Arthur. I'm not going to do Saul Bellow. The Gentleman from J. George William Lutet. Hopefully it ends before I start reading. The Gentleman from J by George William Lutet.